What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode and another edition of What's Now with John Marshall. And I have somebody here in the building with me. Uh, I'd like to consider a, a friend, but more than that, uh, an icon, a living legend, somebody that has cultivated and created the way that our industry and the music sounds to this day. Uh, to this day, as the Bronze Bomber would say, he is a two-time Grammy Award winning multi-platinum selling, just icon in the industry. And what I think is the most uh, important thing, one of the most humble people that I know that is in this game. And I say that in the best way possible. Today, I got Drummer Boy with me. Drummer, what's going on, man? Hey, yeah, boy, what's happening? Yeah, boy. One of the most iconic uh, drops in the game as well. Come on, man. Come How you on, doing, man. doc? I'm excellent, man. I'm excellent, man. Always a blessing to be here. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, briefly before we hopped on. The last time I saw you, man, I don't know how long ago it was. It had to be, man, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Yeah. Fulton Industrial, Club Babes, man. You came to my birthday celebration for me, man. Yeah. And that just, it meant a lot to me, dog. Oh, it man. really did, man. Just uh, somebody that has, that means so much to the game. And I know, what do the kids call it these days, uh, giving people their flowers. So I want to make sure that I do that for you, dog, and just say, bro, me speaking on behalf of the industry, we appreciate you, dog. Already, man. I appreciate that, dog. I appreciate y'all as well. Without you, man, we wouldn't have the hits that we have today. And I could go on and naming and naming them, but I'm, I'm scared I'd miss a couple, man. Oh, it's a lot, man. That's what they got to get the book for. Hey, that's man. what I was just about to segue yeah. into it, man. That's why they got to get right. the book. But before we get into that, which we will, um, let's. what I like to do, man, is take it back and take it back to the beginning. Because what I want people to be able to see and experience and, and just understand is how did you get to where you are? And not just from a professional standpoint, but from a personal standpoint, from a character standpoint, from a financial standpoint. How did you get to where you are? Where did it all start? And, you know, how did you turn into or become Drummer Boy? So take me all the way back, man, to when you first fell in love with music and the game. Man, I mean, honestly, it really started with, with you know, I, I'm a sponge. You know what I mean? So I pick up energy. I pick up, you know sounds and just, you know, hearing stuff. And I, I think it honestly starts from the womb, man. My mom was putting the womb up to the speaker, bro. Really? Just playing music. So before I was on earth, I, my ears was already alive and trained. And you know what I'm saying? It's like I would have these nightmares that just beats in my head all day or just sounds or whatnot that, you know, I, I had to learn how to turn the nightmares into into dreams. You know what I'm saying? Into mm -hmm. like positive once I learned how to make beats, that come from Insane Wayne. But, you know, just being birthed into music, man, Memphis, a musical city, like from the opera, my mom was in the opera, my pop was in the orchestra. We the home of the blues, rock and roll right up the street. You know what I'm saying? Bluegrass. Oh, wait a minute, man. You said you said moms was in the orchestra? My mom was in the opera. In the my opera, pop was and pops in was in the orchestra. What, right. what did pops play? Clarinet. And, and mom was in the opera, so she sang. She sang, and she was in the church choir and all that. So from the church to Memphis being the home of the blues, mm -hmm. country up the street, Nashville, you know what I mean? So it was just, we we call Memphis, like, really, like, I call my music gumbo. Because mm -hmm. there's so many different genres of music, and it's just, like, taking the best about what you have and, and, and you know, cooking that, you know, Grandmama, she'll take them onions hey, that she got left. Some, of that, take some of that sausage? So, yeah, yeah, some sausage left. She got a little chicken left. She might have some <laughs> bell peppers, some tomatoes, woo, woo, woo. And these are the last things she got in the refrigerator. She put it all in one pot. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like what I did with music and, and just being exposed to every genre of music that exists. You know what I mean? And that allowed me to learn how to write, compose, arrange then I happened to have an older brother named Insane Wayne who was, you know, heavily in the street and in the in the music, mm -hmm. in the hip hop. So I kind of just came up like little bruh to, you know, the 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 big dogs like Jazzy Faze, Carlos Brody, Slice T, Insane Wayne, I R P Big Bro. You know what I'm saying? And just being around them, uh, I was able to bump into the Teelas and you know what I'm saying, uh, the the Scarfaces and the Jazzy Faze, Noon Time and so on and so forth. I'm making my name with Yo Gotti. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And coming up with Gotti, 
coming up with, uh, you know, the faculty and uh, uh, Trill was another group that I produced out of Bolton. So just making a name with myself, you know, with Gangsta Boo, um, you know, coming up under under Three Six Mafia for real. You know, this is saying? real OG, like you know, what I'm saying, uh, young living legend OG rap that we're talking about at this point, right? Oh here, yeah, man. absolutely, absolutely. When, when the South in. was starting to, uh, like uh, Stack said, when the South starting to have something to say. Absolutely, you know what I mean? absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And we was motivated by Outkast, motivated by Ball and G, Player Fly, mm -hmm. Gangsta Black, you know, Gangsta Pat. You know what I'm saying? Just so many legendary artists from our city and from other places. Mm -hmm. Man, I was heavy on N.W.A., heavy on Warren G., you know, Ice Cube, Nas, uh, you know what I'm saying, Run, DMC, Wu-Tang, big Wu-Tang fan. You know what I'm saying? So I think just overall being a fan of music and appreci appreciating music, you know, I started making music myself. It, was there any point in time, man, where it kind of clicked for you? or Because I know you said that uh, Mon Dukes used to put the, the 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 belly and the womb up to the speakers and just, I'm sure she sang to you. Like, I, I'm pretty sure all our mamas did at some point in time yeah. sing to us. Was there any point in time, man, as you were um, growing and getting older, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is, where it kind of clicked and you said, oh, this is music and this is what I want to do for a living? I mean, we I, we grew up singing, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? We were singing family. Like, uh, I was in the church choir. Like, uh, we'd slide in the living room singing Michael Jackson or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, you know, it's... it's it's It was just it there. Was the, yeah, it was just like, man, you can do whatever you want to do. That's how my family raised me. So the sky was the limit. I was heavy in basketball. I mm -hmm. love football. You know what I'm saying? I ran track. You know what I mean? Like, so anything I did, I was getting awards. I'm still getting awards. To this you know, day. <laughs> to this to this day from, from hooping and celebrity basketball games and, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, just going crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's you know, it, it, I really got into it through insane way. Okay. Big brother. Big brother. You know what I'm saying? Just having somebody that was the first person I wanted to be like, walk like, talk like. And I understood my purpose literally like 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I was gonna make beats. That's you know that's what, what I saying? was trying to get to right yeah, there. Yeah. When you when it, it clicked for you, when you was oh, like, yeah. okay, this is what I'm doing. Like right thirteen, here. fourteen, I'm cafeteria king, beating on the tables, everybody <laughs> freestyling. You know what I'm saying? And just everybody kind of coming around, feeling our vibe. Like I feel like you know my drum come from the, the spirit, the heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like the soul of the of the of the of the, of the music. Shout the out drum. to the high school. What high school you went to, man? Cordova High School. Okay. That's yeah. in Memphis? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. So, okay. like, I, I'm from Whitehaven, Blackhaven. Mm. And bam, you know, got in some trouble 12, you know what I'm saying? I feel Going like we all 13. did, man. I feel like all my partners, man, got yeah. in trouble in high school, man. Had and and this was junior bit. high. This was junior <laughs> high. Oh, junior high. Okay, I had, okay. I had just uh, finished Alsa Elementary. I went to Alsa. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like you go to Alsa, you finna either go to Hamilton or probably go to Whitehaven. You know what I'm saying? So, bam, I got in some trouble. Mom moved me to Cordova, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And she got a new job, so that shit really, like, changed my life, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And put me, you know, predominantly white neighborhood, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just learning, you know what I'm saying? A different uh, but but you, you, you learn how to kind of maneuver between uh, both sides of the, uh, I guess, the railroad tracks or whatnot, yeah. man, because you still got all, uh, I grew up a little bit that way, too, man. You still got all, all the homies, man, because I went to elementary school in East Point. Here in the city, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. then junior high, high school, it kind of went to the other side. And then uh, junior and senior year went back to the other side. You know what I'm saying? But you, yeah. man, I feel like that that equips you to to be able to maneuver, especially in the business that we're in, man. Yeah, like I had the South on lock, so it really just turned me up on the North side. You right, know what I'm saying? right. Now I'm meeting folks in Millington. I'm meeting folks in Bolton and Bartlett, Houston, Levy, uh, you know what I'm saying, Germantown. You know what I mean? Collierville, Somerville, just all the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it it put me on. I was playing varsity basketball, whatnot. They were playing my beats at the warm ups during the warm up. Game. Damn, drummer boy was playing varsity basketball in high school, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ninth grade. Uh you know what I'm saying? D one, D two scholarship. You know what I'm saying? And just getting Damn, so much real, money. Bro, I ain't know that. Oh yeah. So getting 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 to the money coming out of out of high school, it was just like, I ain't really got time to listen to no coach. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what to do. And I'm not getting paid. It wasn't mm -hmm. no NIL. Yeah, going I'm about on to say, yeah. At the time. So, you know, it was like, man, I'm I'm focusing on what I could be number one at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was music. All right. So, uh, again, I want to still focus on the history just a little bit more because I know we have a lot of uh, up and coming producers, artists, uh, engineers, and everything like that that probably get a lot of their sound, not probably, that get a lot of their sound from you. 
And they may not know it. They may not know all the hits that you made and everything like that. So, again, before we dive into all that, what was the first program or machine that you were making your beats off of, man? First keyboard I had was a Roland XP50. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, I got a... Uh, I was going to say, take me through the progression. From there, I got an MPC 2000. And then I eventually got a 2000 XL. Got another Triton keyboard, a couple other keyboards. And bam, I ended up getting a uh, MPC 4000. And then bam, just, you know, went from there, like from analog equipment to getting more on Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And really having my stuff Pro Tools ready because that's what the labels wanted. They master files of their track outs in. So we were sending the beat already tracked out in Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you would get your money. You ain't finna get your check unless you got your master. Uh huh. Like you say, tracked out all the way. Oh, yeah, not too tracked. Like, uh -huh. I know y'all, today, gang, you just sent out an email, <laughs> your beat might come out just like that. Uh -huh. Straight MP3, distorted and everything, you know what, what I'm saying? What they say, compressed. compressed. All compressed that, like, file. man, yeah, man, nah, it's quality over here. People are like, man, how your shit sound so warm and it be beating in the club? That's because we dropping wave files, mm -hmm. split Them for big, split for split boys. for split, and it's mixed right. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing distorted. So, you know, the mix always been key for me. That's why DJs love me. That's why DJs play the music. You know, I can go to live on a Sunday and Stevie J going, who the fuck is Stevie J? That's my voice, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Doing the drops. You I know did not saying? know that. Who the fuck <laughs> is Stevie J? That's me. You know what I'm saying? So, Man. bam, just, you know, I could take a mix to him on a Sunday and right after Drake, he can play my shit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a quality, you know what I'm saying? Mix, you know what I mean? And that's another reason why I've been so relevant and why records play so many times mm -hmm. it's because of that mix man. you know what man that, that's a great segue into what i was thinking about uh and you know what drama i was gonna prepare a whole bunch of questions and and really just like dive deep into like really get into this that and third but i was like you know what man i just want to kind of go with the flow on this one and just uh, really? see where the conversation takes us and that's a really good segue um it may be a loaded question but what do you think has kept you not only just in the game, but so relevant and so successful for, I know it's over 20 years. How long have you been in the game, man? Shit, since 13, 14 for real. My first placement, you know, I would say would be like 17, mm -hmm. 16, 17. What was placement really, was that? Uh, Yo Gotti, okay. Life Album. Okay, boom. You know what I'm saying? And, and us working on the Life Album. Like right. A lot of this music came out a year or two after, after but working on Tila, working on Gotti. You know what I'm saying? And just the mixtapes that I had done before that, um, you know, it just, it just, you know what I'm saying? Put me in position. So back back, back to the question, man. Uh, uh, what do you think has, in your opinion, clearly, man, you're, you're, you're talented. Uh, the, the, the Grammys have said so. The streets have said so. The suburbs have said so. The, the radio PDs have said so. What do you think it is that has kept you here and on this level uh, for 20 plus years, man, because the producers, they can come and go and the artists even more so than that. Uh, but what do you think has kept you here this long, man, and keeps you at such a high level? I mean, the, 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 the kingly definition is, is making those around you positive mm -hmm. and, and, and bringing more positivity around those that are around you. You know what I mean? And not selling my soul. You know what I mean? Being true to you know my purpose and understanding that it's a, it's a bigger life. This this is eternal. You know what I mean? So as long as I keep it true to what the gifts that God gave me and use that in a positive form, I'm gonna be here forever. And you my music what? gonna last forever. You know that, what I'm saying? It, it's interesting that you bring that up, man, because I was talking to uh, my partners, man, before you came in, and I was just ex expressing to them and explaining to them how much of a humble guy that you are and and how just your name and your character is unmatched, you know what I'm saying, in the game. And I was saying that about DJ Scream, too, who's up mm -hmm. here at iHeart, and we ran into him a little earlier today, too. And mm -hmm. I was like, y'all, there, there are not a lot of people, guys, girls, or they or thems, <laughs> in the mm -hmm. game uh, that have that kind of reputation where... Any and everybody is like, nah, drummer? Nah, fuck with that nigga, bro. Like, straight up. You know what I'm saying? And I really believe that, you said something interesting, man, that God factor comes into it to where it's like, man, it's so easy to get caught up and wrapped up in the bullshit, especially mm -hmm. in our industry, man. 
uh, the women, the money, the the drugs, the drink, the woo doo all that stuff like that, man, that can just throw people off track. And we've seen people get thrown off track uh, many times. Very talented people, man. Mm-hmm. And I just, again... I just I look at your career and who you are and how you maneuver and I almost sit back in awe, man, because I've hit road bumps in my career, man. From I've been four different radio stations. They say if you ain't got fired in radio a couple times, you ain't ever really worked in radio. Yeah, yeah, I done yeah, got yeah, fired yeah, yeah. in radio, so I don't really yeah. worked in radio, man. Yeah, but yeah. Um, speak to me about the spirituality and and just just your personal journey and and how that keeps you on par and on point. You know, as you navigate. A pretty difficult industry, man. Man, honestly, it's 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 just being grateful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't you can't choose your parents. You can't choose, you know, being born and coming into life. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things you don't have a choice on. But when you do get into the life, you have a lot of choices. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To do things that are, you know, surrounded around the gift that you have. Some people have a problem maybe understanding or finding what their gift is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm that guy that helps people kind of find that gift, especially if it's music related. Um, you know, from whether it was Gotti to Jeezy to Gucci to T.I. or Rocco or 2 Chains, like, Plies. Like, I was around these people before they they were who they were mm-hmm. type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Part so, of the real creation process that got them to what they right. are now. So what do you do in the shadow compared to what you do in the sunlight? You know, really determines, you know, how 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 you're able to navigate through the terrains. What are you doing in the rain compared to what are you doing in the in the in the in the sunlight? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just about putting forth the same person that you are when ain't nobody looking. You got to be that same person when everybody looking. Pops always told me that. Uh, t- tell me this, man. Has there ever been a time or? I thought about this question earlier, so this is a question that I thought about earlier. Has there ever been a time where you was like, man, fuck this shit? Or or a time where you were like, man, this ain't going to work out? Because it feels like you've been successful for so long and that there was never any ups and downs. And if so, that's great. Um, but for the, I guess for the regular folks out there, man, was there ever a time when you were like, man, I don't know what the fuck is going on, or I don't know if this is going to work, or I don't know how I'm going to get through this particular point in time in my life when it comes to the career? I mean, I think it's it's just like being, if you travel from wherever you are to, 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 let's say you travel from here in Atlanta all the way, you get in a car and you drive to L.A., mm-hmm. it's going to be a detour. Mm-hmm. It's going to be <laughs> some traffic. Yeah. It might be it might be it might be a bumper to bumper, you know what I Uh mean? So it's really about understanding and having patience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it's okay to have breaks. It's okay to have setbacks. A lot of times your setbacks or your breaks or, you know, those type of situations where, you know, you just had to sit still. It's for a reason. Give me one. Give me one. You know what I mean? It's it's so you can catch up on knowledge, catch up on game. At some point, Anything that we're trying to learn or be better at, we have to research. Mm-hmm. We have to put in the practice. We have to put in that due diligence and, and that learning curve to really understand your craft, whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, a firefighter, a police officer. It's rankings and everything. It's levels. You're not just going to be lieutenant. You're not just going right to be head. You know what I mean? VP or start off CFO or whatever. So you got to work your way up, whether you're a point guard you know what I'm saying? Whether you're a running back, you might be the head dude in college, but then once you get to the NFL, now you're the you number realize, three. Like, oh. You're the number four. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? You got to work You gotta work your way up. You know what I'm saying? And then what do you do when you get the opportunity mm-hmm. is 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 really the key to success. Being prepared when, when opportunity presents itself, that's the key to success. So those down moments was for you to prepare. Those down moments was for you to get your shit together, to know what you're talking about. So when certain people ask you a question, you can speak intelligently mm-hmm. as opposed to, oh, well, oh, do the, okay, bam, you just missed a million dollars. Oh, well, I don't, damn, you just missed a hundred thousand. Play some of your beats. And you, oh, well, I don't, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or you playing shit that ain't really mixed right. You never really mastered the art of mix. Mm-hmm. You, you never really, really mastered the art of music appreciation. 
you a music producer, but you don't understand theory. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you get in the room with a Beyonce or something like that, you don't even know the keys. You don't even know how to change key. You don't even understand tempo. You know what I'm saying? Or or be able to accent and 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 be a conductor and maybe turn it down a little bit or let's turn it up some. You know what I mean? And being able to you know be in control of the destiny and the sound that you have. You control. You who you are. I like how you did that, the Beyonce and the Destiny. That, I like. Oh how you, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. Um, and that, that's that's a good one right there, man. Um, talk to me and, and to the to the people about the um, the differences, the pro, not necessarily the pros and cons, but the differences between a beat maker and a producer. I've been seeing a lot of TikToks and a lot of social media about a producer and a beat maker. Just talk I mean, to me about it's, the, the it's simple. A beat maker might drop off some beats. He just make beats. He's not really concerned about how the song gets made. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A beat maker might give you a beat and then let you come up with everything else. Let you come up with the the cadence. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? Or the beat maker might just email beats. You never see them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Does that work in this day? And uh, if you're oh, yeah. if you're already established, I've seen people, then, it's a lot say. of people who get placements and they just. You know what I'm saying? They have no presence as a person at all. I would have to assume you know that's if mean? you're already established, though. Like, you can send out beats through email and just See, I got a cheat code know. from the get-go because I started off before email. So I started oh, off wow. at a time where wow. I'm going to nail salon and uh-huh. barbershops and malls, hand-in-hand exchange, passing out CDs. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I started off introducing myself, mm-hmm. having a conversation with people. People feeling my spirit mm-hmm. and my energy. If I made the beat, the beat came from within me. Right. Especially if I'm not using MIDI loops and you know things of that nature. So a lot of people who use loops, half of the music ain't even coming from their spirit. Mm-hmm. It's coming from somebody else's spirit. So you don't know who you collaborate with, what kind of energy that person got. They might be good at making beats, but they might be a fucking douchebag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might be a rape or a right. serial yeah, killer right, or right. anything. He make good beats, beat, but, but he around here raping shit. women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that energy ain't going to uh-huh. abide by what you got going on. So that on. energy if really, you, in, in, in that music, man, it really is about... Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that, I feel like that's why we feel it differently with certain songs, man. Like, for instance, we, we was playing Put On, you know what I'm saying, right when you pulled up. It's just something about songs like that, man, that just really resonate. Right. But the pain you. that I had, that emotion that I had, it's a feeling that uh-huh. makes me feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. That same feeling when I see the Chicago Bulls anthem mm-hmm. come on every night, I say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just that feeling. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take that feeling and put it in put on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can take an emotion behind something and then mm-hmm. put it in my music. You see what I'm saying? Now I'm pissed, I'm angry, I'm uplifted, I'm triumphant. I know I'm going to overcome this moment. Can't mm-hmm. nothing stop me. I am a warrior. My, used to, my dad used to make me say, I am a warrior. Mm-hmm. Say it again. I am a warrior. Say it again. I am a warrior. I had to say this shit a hundred times. You know what I'm saying? But moments like that, he was a, a Navy brat, a military. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, oh, that, yeah. so he's on stuff a whole like that level. would help yeah, me yeah, yeah. uplift. And I'm, I'm sitting here making this beat like, I am a warrior. These niggas can't fuck with me. I am a warrior. And I'm making that. After I just watched Chicago Bulls anthem, that, mm-hmm. that that moment, growing up as a kid, wasn't none bigger than the Cowboys and the Bulls. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cowboys. You talking about what? Like er, er, early 93. I'm, I'm born 83, so 10. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 93, yeah, I'm 10. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? 94, I'm 11. Like, bam, this when the Chicago Bulls going crazy, mm-hmm. Cowboys going crazy. Shit, I, I'm about... about Five, six, but I still, you know what I'm saying, felt yeah. it. I saw Michael Jordan play one time, man. Yeah. One time in my life, man. My yeah. pops took me and his pops to, yeah. to, to see him, and it's, it's man, different. Man, watch when the games come on. Mm-hmm. Go watch some of his like, biggest games. Like, go back games to the old stuff. And watch man. them home games mm-hmm. when they introduce. They bring the lights the down. The starting lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Introducing yeah. the starting <laughs> lineup <laughs> for the Chicago <laughs> <laughs> Bulls. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> crazy, and that's that was my motivation for I put on. Man, I, I uh, man, that's that's crazy. I, I I didn't know that. Um, the emotion. So my pops is in branding, or what well, was? He's retired now, but worked for Coke, and he's in branding. And you know, people say so much about brands, brands, brands. Your name is a brand. Get the good logo, the brand, the brand, the brand. My pops was like, man, I was in branding for 20, 25 years. Man, branding is nothing more than the consumer's emotional connection with your product. It ain't about the logo. It ain't about the motto. It ain't about, yeah, it's about the consumer's emotional connection with your product. When you take a sip of Coke, 
after eating a hamburger or eating some hot wings, bro, you just, ah, you know what I'm saying? When you hear put on for my city, you know what I'm saying? As well as countless other uh, uh, anthems, mm -hmm. anthems, hip hop anthems that you've created, it just rises something up in you, man. That is just, it, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, bro. I, oh, yeah. I, I really do, man. Oh, yeah. And you, you have unlocked that somehow. And I think it goes back to what you were saying about it comes from the authenticity within and comes from the emotional connection that you have with your music from within. And it, it's, you you are producing it. it. You are creating it. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? From You're not here, just you're taking what's in your boom, head there you go. and putting it into a music form that you can hear through mm -hmm. your ears. You know what I mean? And I think as a producer, the ones that are able to make the artists around them better, the ones that are able to coach the artists, maybe therapeutically guide the artists, mm -hmm. maybe talk to their life. First thing I do with an artist, I talk about what they're doing, where they want to go, mm -hmm. what they're going through to understand what they're going through personally. That's what means the most. And man. we pull that into the words. Mm -hmm. We pull that into the story. This is the truth of what you're going through, who you are, bam. Best example of that is Mary J. Blige, My Life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just how, I mean, R.I.P. Chucky Thompson, how he was able to pull that story and pull that information. I had to pull those stories and pull that information out of Gucci. Mm -hmm. All the music that we made, you know what I'm saying? The State versus Roger Davis yeah. and oh, man, the return to Mr. Zone 6 and Wilt Chamberlain and, you know what I mean? Just understanding the mindset of, okay, damn, he Gucci honestly felt like he was Will Chamberlain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm the best in the league, and I'm I'm winning on a consistent basis. Can't nobody stop me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if you look at what Will Chamberlain did, you know, a lot of us, that was, that might have been before before us. But I you, never watched Will Chamberlain neither, play. But if you, yeah, you know what I'm ahead, saying? But if you watch some of them, go go back and watch some of their tapes, some of their footage, you'll be like, damn, can't nobody this stop, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Yeah, so you got to understand the mindset. And then as he tells their story, as Jeezy tells their story, as T.I. is Yo Gotti. All of these people tell their story. That's what I kind of found was my niche, helping people tell their story, hitting them with a cadence or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? First time I met Dolph, man, I hear him rap. Hey, rest and then in I, peace, man. I repeat, Goodness then gracious. I rap back to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bam, ooh, ooh, boy, if you hit him like this or you change the flow up every four bars or, man, hit him with this or, mm -hmm. man, try rapping like this. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And bam, being a coach, being a guy that's like, as a producer, we know what rhythms and melodies sound good mm -hmm. on top of that beat. Mm -hmm. Especially if the beat already doing this, then jump on it like this. Hop on it like this. Put a pause right here. So you're, you're, you're orchestrating. You're orchestrating. You know what I'm saying? Just giving them the cadence and then they just fill in the blank. Man. Oh. So, you know, you got to be able to take that and 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 finish the record mm -hmm. and produce a, a, a full-fledged song. And take them on a roller coaster throughout the song. The intro might hit you with, t -t 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 then the beat drop. And then go, you go to the verses. You know? Go to a break, uh, a breakdown on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now you took them on a little roll, like mm -hmm. okay, bring them up, bring them back down. You know what I'm saying? Something that's a story, man. That's a producer, man. You can take somebody on a roller coaster ride for real. All right, so uh, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, drummer, but I, I, I want you to uh, take me through a little bit of the story, man. A little bit of the story with a couple of these influential artists that you have just named about how you first got with them. And um, one of the two of the records that you produce with them that are just, you know, just amazingly big, ridiculously crazy records. Uh, I want to do uh, Gucci. I want to do Jeezy. Uh, let's do Dolph. And, uh, Gotta do Gotti. That's and, where I started. And, boom. All right, so let's do, let's do that. Let's do those. Let's do those. Let's start with Gotti. Let's start yeah, with yeah. Gotti. Yeah, so Gotti out the rip. I've been working with Gotti since Inevitable Entertainment days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? First album I got with him on was, I believe, his third album, mm -hmm. dropping as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which was Life. 
You know what I'm saying? That's this uh, TVT days? This Inevitable Entertainment. This the uh, single that got him the TVT deal. Okay, got you, got you, got you. So my producer, Swizzo, at the time, he did four tracks on the album. Mm-hmm. My brother, Insane Wayne, he did four tracks on Life album. Give me, give me a year. I did. Give me a, a time, a year. Around. This is, uh, man, we was working on it probably like 2001, 2002. Okay. The album came out 2003. Gotcha, all right. You know what I'm saying? But we was working on that project for like two years. And... um. Uh, after Life album, he dropped back to the basics mm-hmm. right after that. So the first f- intro song on that, right. when you see me, shouty, pop you collar, <laughs> then you holler, hey, that's what's man. up. What up, drummer? Hey, what Ooh, up, mama? Hey. hey, That was like the first street anthem. Man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That I had that really like took everybody by storm. Then, bam, I did a record for Tila called Tennessee. Tennessee, 23s, I keep it clean, man. Tennessee, in the land of goody, good at Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? Bam, that's Tila. I put Gotti on that joint. I put Haystack on that joint. Gangsta, uh, Gangsta Boo, uh, 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 Maru, and Criminal Man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I've always been about unification. That was the, uh, the, the theme song to the Tennessee Titans when the Tennessee Titans came to Memphis. Really? You know what I'm saying? So, bam, that was like Tennessee, 23s, we keep it clean. So that I'm on the radio literally my first year in college. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? This going, this playing on the radios and whatnot. Bam, I get a call from Pastor Troy like, man, man, I need some hey, beats, man. Troy, P. Troy. Beats. Shout out P. Troy, man. First song I did on Pastor Troy is uh, make them get uh-huh. that money right. Make them get that money right. Still goes, still goes crazy. Man, that would forever go crazy in the, in the in the strip clubs to this day, man. Absolutely. Strip club anthem, I wasn't even old enough to get in the strip club. Uh-huh. Bam, I go from there to getting a call from Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood block call me. Like, man, we working on Boys in the Hood. We got Jeezy. Okay, so now we're da, segueing da, da, da. into the Jeezy. Okay, yep, gotcha. Yeah, so bam, I do a song with Jody Breeze mm-hmm. and Jeezy called uh, uh, Trap Niggas. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know man. They don't let you on the tra- with a well. Now, hey, I'm well known myself, so hell, I might as well trap with you. Shit Come can on. get crazy, dog. I hope you brought your trip. Man, I'm a cat pillin' crack dealer. This ain't just no rap, nigga. Come on, hey, man. Come hey, on. I got you, bro. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Classic. So, bam, yeah. I do that. Jeezy really go solo. Here, nigga. <laughs> yeah, Jeezy go solo. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Standing ovation. First platinum <sighs> black. You know what I'm oh, saying? that was your first platinum plaque? First platinum Standing plaque. Standing ovation. You know that mixtape, man, goes down as, in my opinion, the 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 dopest mixtape that has ever come out. And of. this was the album. This Thug Motivation oh, 101. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So this Thug Motivation 101, I did You Dig. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I did uh, White Sid Girl. On 24s. You did. Then I come with White Girl. Keep the White Girl, Christina Aguilera. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Then we come with Flexing. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Then we come with Put On. You know what I'm saying? The Run with Jesus. You did crazy. the whole album, nigga. <laughs> my, my, the singles, <laughs> album yeah, after singles, album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lose My Mind. Uh huh. Uh, Jeezy and Plies yep, You know what I'm saying yep. 12, 45 About that time Bam So I get a call from Plies Okay Like you know what I'm saying I need some of that Some of that work First song we did was Man Even though I'm not your girl man, I still I'm call, you call you my shawty Like Come on man Bam He was goon this Goon that Again And that was uh, T-Pain was on that motherfucker too Or was yeah, I my tripping or? Yeah yeah He was on that yeah But being a coach Being a producer Being mm-hmm. able to guide a guy Like okay it, all the music I heard was goon this, goon that, goon this, goon that. I was like, bam, okay, you got this shit on lock. Yeah, let's, let's. Like, let's you got 30, this. 40 records of that. I done heard uh-huh. Boo Cool with the goon, the goon, the goon, the goon. I was like, bam, you ain't fucking with T Pain. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You need to get with T Pain. Because T Pain, Tallahassee, Plot. They both was on the come up. They uh-huh. both was like buzzing artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, bam, y'all got them. Jump on the song together. T Pain put the hook down. The rest of history. You know what I'm saying? Man. Then we come back with what's in my pocket, dog. Big, Big face, honey. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's literally it's about the history lesson, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Birdman reached out like, man, uh, uh, that, that shit you and Drake did. Drake called me from uh, Canada. You know what I'm saying? One of my goons in Canada called me like, man, uh-huh. man, you need to work with Drake. He coming from this TV show, Degrassi. This really before the music was uh, out bro. yet. You ain't talking about money to is it money to yeah, blow? Yeah, first song I did with money to blow. Bruh. Get to shaking something because that's what drama produced it for. You know what I mean? Out the gate. First song. I don't know him. He don't know me. That but shit. bam. This y'all what had, y'all hadn't met or nothing like that? Yet? Never. Man. Same thing with Plies. Same mm-hmm. thing with Rocco. First, man, I get a call from Rocco. First song we do, I'm going to do me. This biggest song to date. 
You know what I'm saying? You don't even know it up there in a couple of Oh, yeah, albums, not, yeah, correct, correct. You know correct. what I'm saying? But, I, I, let me correct myself. My favorite in, in the song today. I, man, yeah. Rocco, man, he's from the West Side, bro. Salute, man. Zone 4, CRG, I see y'all, bro. Hell yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, man, it's about delivering. And mm -hmm. the more you can deliver, the more label see profit, folks going to call you. You know what I'm saying? As well as the music good. Rick Ross, man, well, I need some of that shit. Mm -hmm. well, here I am. Oh, Here yeah, I am. Yeah. I got a lot of dollars I could spend them on her. A uh, lady anthem again. It's a nigga that was wearing white t-shirts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now he in tuxedo. We got the tiger and the white piano yeah. and the upper echelon to yachts and I the can mansion. See and, how you know you're I mean? coaching the the style through the music too. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. How you said like plies. We hear the goon, the goon, the goon, and, and we love it. Them goons out lurking. We we love all that. Hey man, let, let's try this a little bit right here, man. Absolutely. And then boom, same Absolutely. thing with Ross. Let's try this a little bit right here. Boom, man. Absolutely. So you know, cats listen to me. Everybody who didn't listen to me, they ain't really got to rap no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? First song I did with Walker, no hands. Mm -hmm. Girl, drop it to the floor. I love the way your booty go. We diamond, my dog. Mm -hmm. This is a song that nobody in the studio really wanted or cared about. And really? it was like, man, drum, you got the permission to go and leak that junk. I can leak that junk. Yeah, you can leak that junk, bro. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Next bro, thing you know, niggas got I took diamond that plaques. Yeah, <laughs> I took that junk to DJ Holiday, bro. Shout, shout, shout out, out to Holiday, Holiday you know man. what I'm saying? And bam, it, the, the rest was history. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ply shot it. We had to leak that record. It was other artists really, that was trying man? to get that record. The, the, the label didn't really take full bet or full gamble on that record. And mm -hmm. it was like, okay, we got to show them this record, the hottest record in Florida. Mm -hmm. And literally, we put it out and went to the radio in, in, in the local area. Plies did his thing, man. Bam, next thing you know, it was the hottest record in Florida. Do, do you think that that art is lost in this day and age? And, man, I, I love and I support, man, just being a child of hip-hop, man. All the artists that are doing their thing, all the producers that are doing their thing, promoters, a &Rs, all this club owners. Do you think the art of working and pushing the record the way that we used to have to do back in the day when you used to have to get the snipers out there putting up the uh, the posters and, and had to get the, the... Man, I put together five thousand when I was interning for Grand Hustle, man. I had to put together five thousand of Big Country Kane's cocaine mixtape that Kale produced a lot of. And I mm. put the inserts in, the CD in, close it up in the Slim Jewel cases when the Slim Jewel cases just came out. I feel like that's a little lost, man. Number one, because the internet's here. Streaming is here and stuff like that. But is the art of pushing something for real? Is, is that lost? Is that gone, man? It's, it's, it's definitely, you know, missing. It's not it's not there as much as it has been. Even artist development. But as a producer, man, like, that's why I really feel like we don't get the credit we deserve in that aspect because... You saying producers? Yeah, because mm -hmm. we we A&R. At least me, I can't speak for everybody else. Right, me, right. I'm an A&R. I'm a therapist. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a musician. Uh, and I'm an executive. Mm -hmm. From any form of deliverable, from the creative side, we got to make a hit. We got to make something hot musically and verbally that matches and coincides. So that's the music side. We got some hard-ass lyrics on a hard-ass beat, and it's a song that tells a story, and it takes us on a ride. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part of the creative side. On the business level, we still got to get that shit mixed, mastered. Who are we going to use? Research, resourcing, consulting, mm -hmm. getting everything down to a T from, okay, what's the video going to look like? What's the artwork going to look like? Mm -hmm. Do we have high-resolution photos? Do we have an EPK? A Do we have a bio? How are we going to tell that story and help this story that's in the music reciprocate to the story that's being told to the PR, to the press, to the blogs, to, to the, the websites, yeah, to yeah, the masses, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's got to coincide. New rapper from Louisiana, up and coming, out of Mobile, Alabama, has been working with super producer, drummer boy, da 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 woo 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 tells his story about his pain and his struggles, and da-da-da-da. Immediately, you already, yeah, who he talking about? Mm -hmm. Young Blue. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From 16, built up, bam, he do his deal with Boosie. Okay, bet. Who prepared him for Boosie? Right. We don't talk about that. We don't get that credit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All of the songs, seven, eight, nine, ten projects, just having so much music. Man, we had 80, 90 songs to really help him develop as a kid. Sometimes you 15, 16, you don't know who you is yet. Right. By right. the time 17, 18 come around, okay, now you start starting to feel in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 20, 21, oh shit, you had a kid, you done went through some struggle, mm -hmm. you went through some pain, now you got a big baby mom, this and that. So now you got way more to rap about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? By the time you 20, about. 21, 22, 
You know what I'm saying? And the first song we did was Go Ahead when he was 16. I was about to say, but it started when you were 16. 16 to 21, that's a long time. That's a lot of life that happens for a black man. Preparation. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Knowing what to do, shooting videos. By the time you do 100 or anything, you got some kind of idea. Right. You know what I'm saying? 10 push-ups ain't going to do nothing for you. Right. 50 push-ups ain't, okay, I started getting 100. All right, bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you got to do that daily, consistently. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the spaghetti arms first. You You know know what what I'm saying? But if you keep it up. You know what I'm saying? You got to build that, that foundation. Mm-hmm. And that same form of working out and, and repetition. With repetition, you're able to conquer anything. Absolutely. You're able to master anything. So speaking of mastering, man, um, you have a new book that's out. And a lot of what we've talked about here, which, again, man, I just I want to make sure I just let you know, bro, I am grateful just for you being in the building. And just this is me being... Um, a child of hip hop and, and having grown up on it, man, uh, having the, the stereo system that had the speakers that disconnected from that motherfucker, oh, yeah. man, oh, yeah. on Hot 97.5 out here with uh, Chris Lover Lover and Poon Daddy and, and, and Lala and Mommy Chula and uh, listening uh, to everything to just catch up and see what, you know, what's the hottest stuff, man. A, a real child of, of this game, man, and just a, a lover of this game. Um, you have chronicled a lot of that in your book. And I've been wondering when you were going to do something like this, man, whether it's a a biopic, you know what I'm saying? Or biopic or a a docu-series or a book or something like that. And you've done that now. So um, talk to me a little bit uh, about this book. You are now an author. You know what I'm saying? Uh, You've been, you've been pinning stuff forever. But you are now a, a, a published author. Tell me some about that, man, and and take me through that process of you actually creating this book. Man, it's really honestly, man, for, for people to wake up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people tend to forget or or kind of sleep on, you know, what I've done, or not even familiar knowing that I did all that. And that's why you're here right you know now, because I mean? these niggas need to know. Being a, <laughs> being able to put a face with a name—that's everything. We on a face campaign, um, you know, and. I think one thing that I've done well is is help people believe in themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I was working with a lot of cats, like like Blue, for instance, I was working with him at 16. He didn't believe as much in himself as I did. Mm-hmm. At you that could see something time. that he it Correct. was impossible. It's, for him it's to just see like at that Dr. Time. Dre and Easy E. Easy yeah. E ain't believe in rap, rap or rapping. You know what I'm saying? But Dre, everybody hyped you like, man, come on, bro. You the, man, when you like really that, that nigga in the street, like all you got to do is learn this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Dolph. Dolph wasn't the, the, the hardest, most lyrical rapper coming out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he, he wasn't, was that, bro. But he was that nigga in the street. Okay, yeah. I mean, Dolph was one of my favorite rappers. So you go listen to <laughs> the very first Dolph album uh-huh. and and go listen to some of more more recent you Dolph definitely- albums. See, you know see and hear the the progression. Anybody, yeah, that's go true. to Plies, Jeezy, Tip. I don't care who you, whoever your favorite You're rapper right. is. Go listen to his first project. Go listen to Jeezy's first project, Tev, uh, Tevlon Don. Mm-hmm. I mean, or uh, 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 Rick you Ross. Way back, yeah, go yeah, yeah. Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And 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 go listen to, you know, it, from every day I'm hustling to Triller. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever album you want. You know what I'm saying? It's growth. Jay Z. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? DMX. And that 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 guidance, you know what I'm saying, from a producer standpoint, I think we as producers, we the ones like rooting you on, or like, bro, you can go on kill that shit up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We the ones in the studio. Sometimes we engineering too. You know what I'm saying? And bam, nah, you can hit it better. You can hit it better. I need to believe this shit. It don't sound believable, mm-hmm. and getting it to a point where it sound believable. You know what I mean? I think us pulling that out of the artist, those are the stories that you get. In behind the hits, mm-hmm. just learning the equipment I was using, what dolls, the evolution of technology, the importance of management, entertainment attorneys, split sheets, producer agreements, oh, ISRC man. code, UPC code. You know what I mean? This, and really taking your a, game uh, to the next level. <laughs> well, well, you know they call them books uh, uh, the industry for dummies. You know what I'm saying? Like the, this, those for dummies this, books. This one of them. It, it's pretty much like that, man. But I'm talking to you real straight up, though. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not making it seem like you a dummy because. Oh yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You really smart for even picking up the book. You really smart for even trying. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You smart for even you know becoming an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and controlling your own destiny. You know what I'm saying? And putting it in your own hands. So. You know, salute to the independent artists. Salute to the major label artists. You know what I'm saying? Salute to artists, P 
period. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? Salute to the producers. It's not easy, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I, and the passion is what keeps us here night I, in and, and night out. I'd say it's, uh, and this is me being in it. Now, I'm on the radio, the broadcasting side. I, I'm the, uh, I don't like to use the word gatekeeper, but I, I'm the person that can connect with and take stories like yours and take the relationships that I have with people like yourself and you and give this to y'all so that they can touch you, you know what I'm saying, and, and connect with you mm-hmm. in a as authentically as possible mm-hmm. and as genuine as possible. And I take my role very seriously in this as well because I don't make I don't make beats, uh, I don't produce. I know it sounds good. Yeah. I, I I know it sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I don't rap. I don't sing. But what I do is I inspire, create, entertain, and educate, man. And I, and I make sure that I get you to all of them. You know what I mean? And that book, man, Behind the Hits, I, I think it's just such a crucial read for, I mean, y'all, it's, it's two-time Grammy Award winning. Like, if you don't read it, you're not doing your homework. If you if you want to ace a test, what do you do? You read the textbook, right? Oh, yeah. You 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 uh, go study. You you went to school. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? You you go study. You you get with a, a study buddy. You know what I'm saying? So that means maybe you and your engineer need to read it, or you and your manager need to read it. You get with your study buddy. You Absolutely. make some flashcards. You write in the margins. You do all that stuff like that. Absolutely. Like for me, coming up, like Dr. Dre, uh, Scarface, Master P. Diddy, those were some of the books that I put my hands on. Mm-hmm. And even 50 Cent, like, okay, man, it's a cheat code. Jay-Z give you the blueprint every consistently over and over and over and over again. Like, okay, so I'm going to follow the the guys that's successful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's doing things right and that I look up to, I respect. You know what I mean? And bam, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a take something from that. Damn, I'm going to look at how he solved that problem. I'm going to look at how he solved that issue. And it gives you insight on how you can solve issues in your own circle. Mm -hmm. Or if you identify some of the problems that somebody else was uh, going through, you're able to identify that within your circle even quicker. Mm -hmm. Because now you have a no-so for that that language. Now you have a no-so for what could possibly happen. You ain't got to bump your head every time. You can just learn from somebody else's mistakes. I'm sure you talk about some of your mistakes in there as well. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, it just, man, taxes, paying taxes. I yep. remember one point I got maybe seven, eight years behind on taxes. Damn, for real? You know what I mean? What, what, what was that time, number? By the time I looked at what was old after in, interest and whatnot, it was really like 300000 But because of the entries, the interest and penalties, that 300000 turned into five fifty. Well, drummer, first of all, you say 300000 like that ain't no small, like, that ain't no I big mean, number, we, my everybody boy. Everybody got their bracket. Everybody yeah, understand. True. At the end of the day, you understand math. 300000 is a big number, man. At, at the end of the day, you understand math. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and bam, when publishing checks coming in every six months for $500, 400 uh-huh. you're in position to I got you. handle got you. that. So two periods could pay that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But how did how, how how did you if we can just get into that just a little bit, man? Uh, uh, and I know what's in the book, so y'all make sure y'all go get that book. Uh, Understanding offer and compromise. Okay. Everybody want their money at some point, and if you can't pay all of it, and you can pay some of it in a lump sum, please believe the government is willing to work out a deal with you. Okay. So understand, like we get so scared, like that. What I'm gonna do? I need to phone But because I'm able to offer. Let me give you 167. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Really, we offered like 100,000, and they came back like, hey, if you can do 167, well, all up front, you you free and clear. You know what I mean? Everything and that is comes negotiable. with ne- exactly. Everything is negotiable. So understand how to negotiate. Understand mm-hmm. that your power, that you are a tax paying citizen. If you're paying your taxes, you might <laughs> right, not yeah, be paying yeah, your taxes. Some niggas might not be paying them taxes. But it's worth <laughs> to do the things right now. Bring on a CPA, bring on an accountant, bring mm-hmm. on people who understand. Okay, these are these are you see what Shaq doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep, you yep. see a lot of the game that a lot of the rich and famous are doing where you're not evading, but you're, you know what I'm saying, doing things right. Like, man, you could start a foundation, you could do more events, you could you're gonna have to spend this money at some point. Mm-hmm. So why not do it to better the community? Why not do it to educate the up the upcoming youth and to give back? Man, I had a big brother that gave me game. I have to do that for the youth. I gotta do that for the upcoming producers. You know what I'm saying? Just Guys like Metro, guys like Take Keith, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Guys like London salute, on the track, salute. man. They be like, man, bro, we, man, thank you, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gave us so much knowledge, so much gain. He's 
the homies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need a crib. Y'all need a, a, a couch to sleep on, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? I so was you, always, you, you are young living legend. You you young OG. Absolutely. You, you young absolutely, OG at this point, Absolutely. Man. So, you know, it's about taking those opportunities and giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And now you bring more attention. You bring more eyesight, insight, and you making people around you better. You making your community better. Mm -hmm. And that all uplifts you and it's, it's, it's free press. Boom. Love it, man. I got I got two more things for you. Then I want to get into the single. Then I'm gonna let you get back to doing what Drummer Boy does, man. Uh, number one, what is the what was your lowest point in the industry, man? And then number two is gonna be what's your what's your highest point? Uh, what's your lowest man, point in the game? It's, it's I would say ain't nothing gonna be as low as losing my brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Losing bro is like okay. Let me take a let me take a step back and really evaluate. You know what I mean? What I got going on. Priorities. And making life. sure that his family was straight. Really, like, my nieces, my nephews, my great nieces, my great nephews, mm -hmm. forming his estate and making sure that, you know, him and his kids were straight. That's first and foremost, family. So, you know, it was that for me. It was also venting, um, you know, and, and, and really making sure mom, her losing her firstborn son and whatnot, mm -hmm. she's straight. You know what I'm saying? And then... Delivering the project, My Brother's Keeper. Mm -hmm. um, that was like a, a rap solo project that I gave to the world for my brother. Um, you know what I'm saying? I hate it had to go this way type of, you know what I'm saying? That's one of my first songs that I recorded. I hate it had to go this way. Go this way, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just venting and pouring that out. So, you know, I would say losing my brother and then um, burying my brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them like, Probably the lowest. It don't get kind of that, that finality that. of it, uh, right? You know but. what I'm saying? And it was crazy. Like one of the last songs that I had done, 2017, going into 2018, was "We Popping" for uh, NBA YoungBoy and Birdman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the name oh, of that yeah, album yeah. Mm -hmm. was "Until Death Call My Name." Mm -hmm. So that's literally the last chapter in my book. You know what I'm saying? And I dedicated my book to my brother. So man, salute. You know what I'm saying? Big up. To my brother, Insane Wayne, R.I.P. Insane Wayne. You know what I'm saying? Did, um, was that how you dealt with that? Was the music how you dealt with that? Did you do therapy? Did you do anything? The like music that, was man, therapeutic to... for me. Like you know, what I'm saying it's mm -hmm. it's already hard talking to you know certain people or whatever. Like therapy, I ain't gonna knock therapy, but I think you know, what I'm saying it's a it's a self therapeutic method that you can you mm -hmm. know use that could be a lot more powerful. You know what I mean? Really tapping into yourself. You're uh, not a, depending a on other people to, to to pull it out you, but, you know, for you to be able to just, you know, get it out yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And music I always do that for me. So between that and the family and seeing their faces mm -hmm. and seeing them smile and how much they just like, bro, you got to keep going, uh, you got to keep going. Uh. Mm -hmm. And them, they like my cheerleader. They like my inspiration. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. whatever they need, so on and so forth. So... It has grown me and allowed me to become even deeper in character, even deeper in conversation and communication and, you know, taking advantage of every moment, really working every room that I get in as opposed to just being some arrogant celebrity standing on the wall like, you know what I'm saying, I'm such and such, man, they're going to approach me, they're going to come up to me. It just, it changed my whole mindset. Like, life short, it ain't promised. You know what I mean? I remember when I was, man, six Seven, you know what I'm saying, and that's that that's halfway through life already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, so it's another half point. And then, man, we up out of here. It ain't promise we gonna see a hundred or a hundred ten. So you, when you really see how fast a hundred years go, or just even look how fast twenty years then gone. Yeah. We remember two thousand. Yeah. That's two twenty twenty. So it's about really having fun, enjoying life, and utilizing every moment to 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 change a moment, to change the game. Every day I'm changing the game. Every day I'm, day I'm changing somebody's life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm making not only myself greater, but those around me. And I think as long as we do that, man, it's, it's, it's eternal. So then, uh, and I feel like you kind of touched on it already. The What's the, the, the highest point or the where you feel most yourself in the industry? In, in the in, studio. In the, game, in the studio? Period. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So when you in there cooking, it's just... Ain't nothing like creating. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just forgetting about everything that's going on in the real world and just really like connecting with the synergy mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like it's almost like a okay, a glass of water. I could mm -hmm. put a speaker in front of that water, and you'll see. And it. certain speakers gonna make that water move in a mm -hmm. different form and fashion. Okay, your body made up of eighty percent water, seventy percent water, however much. So, so if good. I do this speaker to you the same way, certain music gonna make you move and jump. You didn't and, even think of that. You know what man. I'm saying? It's the yeah. same thing. So it's just that 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 science behind, you know, transferring energy. Mm -hmm. And transferring emotion into a positive form, you can use that same thing negative. Yeah, you definitely can. You, you can use your powers for evil. And I think yeah. like we got the dark music and that dark. Woo, it make you wanna. Uh, uh, I bet you won't hit him, hit him, hit him. You know what I mean? Just hey. off the rip, you just feel like <laughs> springing ready? on somebody for no reason. Just, just man, just. Oh, oh, right man. in the I job. I love that music too. Any, anybody you don't like, man, yeah. we play that song, bro. You finna fight that day, like you know what I mean. So it's certain, certain energy, it's certain synergy that you can put forth into the world mm -hmm. that's gonna give that same energy back. So I always try to put forth something that's going to stand in ovation, motivational, inspirational, Man. uplifting. Classics. You know what I'm saying? Put Classics. on, here I am, shawty, no hands. It's a photo shoot, girl. It's a photo shoot. Now she getting ready for the cameras and the pictures and having fun. Hey, going crazy. So your mind mentally is enjoying the club. You having fun. Mm. You turning up. You, ooh, they're my song, girl. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever. You just do you. I'm going to do me. me. So it's bam. It's positive and it's still motivation. Mm -hmm. It's still uplifting. It's anthem. Yeah, so yeah. I try to stick to that type of music. You know what I mean? And use this message that we have. Use this story. Use this platform that we have in a positive you, You've been consistent with it, man. So it, it, wrapping up, Drummer, what's the... Um, What's the legacy that you want to leave here, man? When when it's time for you to meet who made you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what is the legacy that you want to leave here on this earth, man? Man, love. You know what I mean? It's, it's love. It's positivity. You know, it's it's excellence. You know what I mean? And the same, the same, the same thing. Beethoven left. Man, we can be the the Beethovens. We can be the mm -hmm. Sibeliuses. We can be the box and the Sebastians. Gonna listen to it we, from you know this point from forever. Yeah, three hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, man? Drum boy, that man yeah. was so real. Ain't gonna be that people that have up. never even that never even met you. We talking yeah. about three, four generations down the line. You are gonna be in history books, man, oh, yeah. or history tablets, or, oh, yeah. or whatever. History oh, yeah. 3D. And we seeing that know. now. You know what I'm saying? The, the No Hands came out 2010, mm -hmm. and it's 2023. People still coming out on prom. Mm -hmm. People still yep. got them getting dressed coming out on. You know what I'm saying? People still flipping and remixing, uh -huh. and you know what I mean. Like that's that's at least that's 13 generations right there. Or just every year is a new. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Every yep. year is a new graduating class. You know what I'm saying? 13 years we still. You know what I mean? Just just you touching a lot of people, my nigga. Four or five years ago, we <laughs> was just three million records sold. Uh-huh. So you mean to tell me Hold in the wait, past so in three, four years we sold another seven diamonds? million? That's how that's how crazy that and it's still number one mm -hmm. or like top ten song in TikTok. I see I see some more plaques coming. Oh yeah, that, it man. might go if, twenty, if it might seven go thirty. In, in three years, man. <laughs> it's crazy. It's definitely speeding up. It's like wow. You All know, right, so um so the records, man, talk to me about this new record. So Come on, man. T Rail. Okay. You know, we always introduce a new talent, you know what I'm saying? And yes, sir. I like I like guys who who are slick and able to find ways or willing to sacrifice certain things to fund their dream. Mm -hmm. T Rail did that. You know what I mean? I, he couldn't afford the Amiri. He would, couldn't afford Nike or couldn't afford different different outfits and whatnot. Man, I see this dude in Walmart. That's how I seen him going viral on. On Instagram, mm -hmm. doing an Instagram reel, and he was creatively spending thirty, forty dollars on an outfit out of Walmart, making it and, and making it, it look fresh, and putting, putting it, on. it on. Like, man, see, I told you, you don't need no name uh -huh. brands to look good. I'm about to go rock my show, y'all. Pull up, da da da. And he went from that to selling out shows. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when we got up, this this the first record we did together. You know what I'm saying? And we got many more smashes, man, but he really understands the game. He understands, man, let me tap into, if I'm going to redo somebody's song, let me tap in with that artist. You know what I'm saying? He redid one of Tank's songs. You saw him get in the studio with Tank. Mm -hmm. You saw them actually release records together. You saw them get in the studio together. We saw t uh, uh, uh jump on Rodeo. You know what I'm saying? Flip that old Juvenile Rodeo. Man. 
You know your boy <laughs> John Boy, aka D Boy Fresh. I had to produce it. You know what I'm saying? And to see juvenile energy and how much mm. he, how excited he was to get on this record. He was like, man, man, there's so many people that be redoing my music, man. For somebody to do it the right way, the right way, man. I just appreciate you taking the time, man. To slide by, just chop it up with me, rock with me. Uh, anytime I call your phone, man, you answer and. I just want to make sure I let you know I appreciate that, man. You already know it. I really man, do. We've on, been man. rocking for 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 some years now. Oh yeah, and, it's uh, due, man. We overdue. Like, I, bro, like, we've been you know trying to make this thing shake time. for a good minute now. Absolutely. You know, perfect. but uh, again, man, thank you, thank you for what you've done for this industry, man. Thank you for what you've done for for my ears, man. As I grew up in this industry, because. It just wouldn't be the same without you, bro. Just straight up. It would not be the same without you, man. Man, much love, much respect, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want to make sure I shout out my artist, Spark Dog, Big Homie K Dog. You know what I'm saying? And, man, some new projects that we're working on. Lord Sosa, my boy Holy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all follow them on the Instagram, HolyX19. Uh, my boy Lord Sosa Official. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to say, where can we find all this, man? We, we Spark need to be able to Graham, his Instagram, Spark underscore A underscore underscore Graham. Spark A Graham, you know what I'm saying, with underscores in between. And uh, Big Homie K-Dog, B-I-G-H-O-M-I-E underscore K-D-O-G-G. From a, if somebody wants to get in contact with you, if somebody wants to drop a bag, or if somebody's trying to get your attention and, and say, man, I want to work with one of the greatest, how do they do that? Bro? Man, Can they do that? Follow me on the ground okay. at Drummer Boy Fresh. I got my contact information on there. There's a cell number that come to my phone. There's an email that that uh, all of the emails come to my phone. So definitely tap in with the Instagram at Drummer Boy Fresh. And um, for the business world out there, or, or guys that you know in the in the in the music industry are trying to make you know their dreams come true, you got to put your money on yourself, man. You got to Absolutely. bet on yourself. One way I've been able to do that and to take my career to the next level is using credit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So take a minute to understand credit, how it works, how it can benefit you. Build yours up, get you some, and go get you some money. I get tired of hearing artists, man, I ain't got no money to do this. Man, I ain't got no money to do this. Man, I ain't got no money. It's, 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 man, it's, 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 you can get your credit fixed in two, three months. You know what I'm saying? One dollar analysis. Make sure y'all check out the website, one dollar analysis. Get your credit together and fund your dreams, man. No excuses. This is the day and age of no excuses. You got chat PT, uh, GPT. You got all these AIs that's writing uh, bios. Mm -hmm. Artists, I don't have a bio. I need somebody to interview you. No, you don't. You know what I'm saying? You can type in the questions that need to be asked. Okay, bam, who are your influences? Where did you come from? What made you want to rap? Da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Just so, bam, okay. Now, and, this is a different level of game you're giving right now, man. Yeah, it's a different get, level of game you're giving right now. Because we need bios. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing a PR can say, hey, yeah. I can represent you, but the first thing who I'm going to need you? is high resolution photos. Yeah. I need your bio. If you don't have a bio, we can call you and interview you and blah, 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 blah. But these are the things that are deliverables mm -hmm. for press. So put your put yourself in position to do that. Another thing on the business side, man, make sure you have an entertainment attorney. You know what I'm saying? Eventually get you a manager. No, that doesn't mean going out getting the most expensive or the biggest and best manager. Man, get your homeboy. They say not to have homes more home more homeboy management and whatnot, but it's okay to build somebody in that. It's like if, if they're gonna do the research and the due diligence of learning how to be a manager, what it takes to be a manager, mm -hmm. you can find that information right on Google. What does it take to be a manager? You know what I'm saying? Who are some good managers? And then go look at what they do well. You know what I mean? And and be able to pull that into what you can do well for your artist or for your client or for who you, whoever you represent. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of tools out there. Make sure we use them, man. One dollar analysis. You know what I'm saying? Check that out. Website. Also go get my official app. It's, it's in the App Store and Google Play. Drummer Boy official app. And you can find out uh, our next podcast drop, what we're doing. Shout out to our podcast as well, Beauty and the Beast podcast. Okay. Me and Dime Peace, y'all check that out. We just interviewed Rico Love, uh, Music Soul Child, Angie Stone, Jonte Austin, Chucky Thomas, Thompson, R.I.P. Um, tap in, man. Beauty and the Beast, the podcast. Y'all make sure y'all tap in. Drummer Boy, Drummer Boy Official. Uh, again, man, just thank you so much for coming by. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next time we get a chance to sit down. Absolutely. And, uh, man, just keep – man, I'm looking forward to the next 20 years of what you get to do in this industry. It's I, docs I, I and really movies am. and films on the way, baby. Movies it's and docs films. Docs, and films, docs right. movies, you know and films, man. Hey. Hey. That's what it is. Docs, movies, and films. Drummer Boy Official. 
Appreciate y'all tuning in. This is What's Now with John Marshall on iHeartRadio.